on this image and uh, placed a little bit on not only the uh, <coughs> graphics that you have, but the logo, and then <coughs> a little bit with the store and the sign and some of the uh, coupons uh, on the pages in the newspaper. So that two things, you can see that uh, from your design uh, would be taken to a sign company to actually fabricate uh, and install the sign. All of the information for the coupons and the uh, pages in the newspaper are trying to show you the layout for some other avenue of the graphics, including the photography, as well as the uh, graphics to place everything uh, together. So just trying to show you a couple things. And then down below, place the giant uh, food ad. So when you take a look at all the graphics they use for the lettering, having you do a little bit of the a cowboy type idea there so just kind of showing you how they're incorporating everything there and also placing a, a couple of sites and then the font uh, of their <coughs> logo but the sites that show and talk about this uh, company of Foodland so you've seen a couple uh, different grocery stores and how they're related and how they would incorporate somebody in your field and the graphics so the logo has a font and they're just a simple section and again this is the font that talks about uh, the ability to use this so it's just kind of showing the first part no payment is necessary for this commercial or personal use but it gives you all types of information maybe some different sites to find some um, different um, fonts that might be of interest question and answer so at least you can get an idea of somebody that's creating uh, fonts, fontographer or a typographer. There's two two uh, words. The fontographer is actually a, a software that they use, and this is just kind of taking this part. So when you download uh, this particular uh, font, this is the one that it is right here. And when you uh, click on it, you just have to download it in True Type fonts. It'll show up for you. <coughs> and the lettering is here. So here I've taken the first step and typed in the lettering and you can see that um, a couple of the letters touch some are a little bit larger and uh, just by highlighting this with the um, section that has all of the type here's the character palette and uh, this particular part I can increase to try to to fit there and you can also tell that the font might be a little um, a little large here so just kind of increase that a little bit. You can see how it becomes a little bit larger from that section. And that's one of the pitfalls. The other option is to change this into um, a styling. So just clicking this part up here and going and typing this again. It'll give you this section. And you can see that the font is close. It has all the rounded pieces as opposed to taking <coughs> an existing font and trying to add to it but at least you can see some of the, the kerning and the spacing. So the, the lettering, I'll try to do this quickly here, is if I click inside this part, this is going to have a connection to it, and this is going to come out. So one thing you can do, I'll put a copy down here, but just click on this, and just go to Type and Create Outlines. Initially, you could have just left it and called it a day, but just trying to show you a couple of things extra. Um, and you go to Objects, uh, Path, and Offset the Path. And that's what this is down below. Here's the preview of minus 4, if it goes on the outside or inside. And just as long as you're set to points, it's pretty good. And you can kind of estimate what that's going to look like. I'm going to give it a color just so I can drag this apart and set it up here at the top. And you can see if that is large enough. If it isn't large enough, you can always do the object path again and offset it. I'm just kind of showing you that you can do it on the opposite side of this too. So I'll just click that OK and give that one a color. So you have all of these um, options that are open to you and keeping in mind that they are somewhat connected there. So you have all of these letters here. <clears throat> so when you take those out, you can kind of get an idea. 
So you could have um, adjusted some of the uh, kerning or the or the uh, tracking before that, but here they are connected. So the A and the L, just kind of zooming in, they're separate right now. I'm just going to take the direct selection tool and select most of this so it gets the curved points as well, and just take that across right there. And then go back to the selection tool, select the both of them, and just click on the pathfinder to make them that one, one section. This part, I want to cut this out. So I'm going to take the cap locks just to lock it on there. It's intersecting on this path, so I can, as long as I'm on that path, and I'm going to have a pretty good connection to it. I can close it or not. Give it a different color so you can see it. Select the two of them and punch that out so that makes that, that selection. And you can see that the N and the D, so I'm just going to select these, use the arrow key, and just come to where they touch. And grab all of the, the rest of the land and drop it over a little bit rather than try to do one at a time and kind of scooping them up as I go. Maybe not so fast. Make sure I get everybody. And drop that across. And you might find a quicker way, but that's just a possible section. And the same with this. This F, I'm just going to take the direct selection tool and grab these parts and just move them over so it catches the O like that and take that off. This part that's going to curve, I can take a rectangle as long as it's on that path and this one. Give that a different color so you can see it. Shift key that and just punch that out. Now if I didn't get it exactly, you can see that it has a couple residual points there, so I'm going to back that up a little bit and just redraw this as long as it's right on this part. It's going to intersect there, intersect on this path, shift key and punch that out. Looks like I still have some, but I can fix that later. So this part, I can curve this and see how it's doing that part. But I'm just going to select that one point, curve it that way, and that gives it that top section. This one, again, if you don't have all of the uh, tools set up, just make sure that you have them connected there. So I'm just going to take out those points and curve this one. So it looks like an easy logo right with a font, but just trying to set this up. And if this has to come out further, I'm going to direct select a good portion of this and just bump it over a little bit. And that'll give me that section. And then just take um, both of these and just stretch them up. And bring this part up. And moving this guy up a little bit. And then taking this part, make sure I get all of it and just drop it down. So it keeps it in proportion <coughs> with all the selections and you have everything that's going in there. So I can hide all of this part and now I have this selection to work with. <coughs> and then picking the red color for it. And again as you go through some of this, if I group this together, and do the object path just to show you an illustrator. Offsetting this path. Here's the preview. So I can carry that piece on as well. And it gives you another option of how to how to illustrate this part. But then just copying this and taking this right into Photoshop will give you that particular section here. To work with on some of these 
items as you go through. So just make sure that you have the uh, parts that you're looking for. And you have that selection. 